Uh, thanks a lot for waiting. We're very happy to have uh, Mr. Paolo Klinken here, the Foreign Minister of Ukraine. This is his first press briefing um, upon, uh, once he was appointed as a minister. Uh, Without much further ado, I'd like to pass the floor to him. Happy to welcome Pavlo Klimkin here. That is his first public press briefing as the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Esteemed friends, First, I'm glad to see you all this day when it's raining. I uh, recollect uh, Rain Dost TV channel. Uh, at the same time, I'm sorry. Uh, my friends uh, were inviting me back last week uh, when uh, <coughs> to here, when you come to work today and you leave your office tomorrow, you just don't have time. It's just not explanation, but uh, uh, I'm always happy to uh, be invited. I basically came here to have a discussion, not to make a statement. I'm ready to answer all possible, wanted to say impossible but uh, questions, but I hope there will be no impossible questions. But still, if you ask me impossible questions, I will be trying to answer even them. I do hope to have a very uh, vivid, uh, live dialogue, and I always expect to have such a dialogue with you, not just today, during the briefing, but I hope that we will have such a dialogue uh, on a permanent basis, I also count on your assistance, your interest to how uh, uh, we are promoting our foreign policy. Let's not make uh, long statements. Uh, I'm ready to answer your questions. It's great, yeah. Okay. So today, court in Voronezh decided to leave Nadezhda Savchuk in the custody. What is your reaction to that and what can official Ukraine do to resolve this matter? Thank you. Firstly, we are ready to do our utmost, really our utmost, to get Nadia out of prison. And my point was from the very beginning, we are talking about politics. We are talking too much about politics. For me, this case is not just about politics. For me, it's also about moral dimension. How one person, how one person, you know, taken hostage, could be, could be brought in another country and here treated, treated in a court. And, uh, We've been doing everything possible, also uh, protesting in uh, in extremely in extremely powerful way. I talked to uh, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov yesterday about that. We are in a very close contact with relevant Russian authorities. Uh, our Consular General is there in Voronezh. And I'm hopeful that uh, he would be able to speak to Nadia uh, today. And uh, it's, it's our key priority at the moment. And the, the court is now working in a kind of Skype mode. Also, also a point for everyone. And uh, it's also about helping Nadia in any possible way. Uh, Russia provided the possibility for Nadia for a state attorney. It's, it's not a point for us. We don't have trust. And uh, we, we've been trying now to find a Russian attorney with a renowned Russian attorney who would be able to defend Nadia in all these court procedures. It's, it's indeed a, a critical point. And as I've said, we are ready to do utmost everything possible to, to help Nadia there. And it's not just a case of politics. It's not just a case of foreign policy. It's also a case of, of moral ground. Because uh, you remember the times, and I'm not a big fan of uh, making comparisons. Then Russian side criticized everything which was going on around Huantanamo. 
Now we have the case which is going far, far, far beyond actually this idea. And indeed, it's critical to help Nadia. Uh, uh, yes, I see. The question is uh, about tomorrow's uh, trilateral consultations uh, in Brussels tomorrow between Russia, Ukraine and the EU. Uh, I will be able to talk about details tomorrow after consultations. But today I can tell you that last week we had a round of consultations at the expert level. Our experts participated, experts from the European Commission and from Russian Ministry of Economy. To get, to, tomorrow, myself, together with the, uh, Mr. De Bucht, uh, the EU Commissioner on Trade, uh, will be there, and I know him uh, very well uh, because we worked together on uh, association agreement. Uh, he was helping us a lot. My position, and in general, the position of Ukraine is very clear. First of all, we signed the agreement. That is the unique case when the agreement was signed, the first political part, then basically the free trade zone and sectoral cooperation now, we have this agreement. Now, Russian side says that there might be problems with implementation. We say, okay, we are ready to discuss implementation. But we are not discussing the content of the agreement. The agreement is signed, it will be ratified in the nearest time, but we are ready to talk about any aspects of implementation. We are ready to talk about the practical measures that we can implement together. I mean, all three parties, including the European Union, we are now suggesting, together with the European Union, if needed, to set up the uh, consultative uh, expert group, uh, advisory expert group and Russian side says but if there are some uh, violations uh, with the uh, certificates of origin but that's the issue of implementation there might always be some uh, violations of fraud but this is the issue of bona fide uh, of implementation bona fide we need to really implement uh, the European norms that are in the agreement and we will be talking tomorrow and I hope the discussion will be constructive but we have enough arguments. I have not just read the agreement, I know it uh, because I'm the chief negotiator, Mr. Valery Petnitsky is uh, going with me, he was the main negotiator on free trade zone and I believe we will be well prepared. Microphone, would ask them. The microphone, please. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I mentioned, uh, well, when the question is asked in English, I will answer in English. Uh, when I uh, learned uh, that uh, she is there in Voronezh, I personally was shocked, not just as the minister, but personally. And uh, I believe we need to talk about politics here, but this is the case which goes beyond politics for me it's again the question of morale how a person who was uh, uh, taken hostage uh, is now on the territory of another country now is uh, under judicial procedure and as uh, uh, soon as we've learned that, we stated the process, the protest, and we are in permanent contact with the Russian authorities. We sent two diplomatic notes. I will not talk about all formalities. We've done that. But at the same moment, we informed all the world community about that case. We need support. We need such a support that uh, so that all the community learns it. And we need your support. Please do it in such a way that this case becomes known to everyone. We need a campaign 
how to help Nadia. As to other practical things, our council is there. Uh, since yesterday, and we are working hard on that, and I hope that today he will see Nadia there. He will have access, he will help her personally. We have a very good council, Mr. Gennady Baiskalenko. I know, I've known him personally for many years. I've worked with him in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Besides, I mentioned that there's also the um, uh, public attorney we do not trust that person and we are now looking for a very good uh, Russian uh, lawyer who is uh, famous for helping in such cases. I hope that we will have the result in the nearest future. We will find such a person so that additionally we can help Nadia in the court. Now there is uh, court proceedings uh, going on. Uh, over Skype, it cannot happen so. That's a closed type of proceedings. I am as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and personally, I would like to ensure that we will be doing uh, all we can. And that's not just a formal diplomatic uh, expression. We are doing our utmost to help her. And also, we've heard that sometimes we used to hear the criticism. I never want to compare. What was happening around Guantanamo? Uh, there was a war uh, against terrorists. But what's happening with Nadia? When our citizen happens, uh, is in a different country, that goes not just beyond politics but beyond morals. Uh, Ukrainian uh, week. Uh, my question is a continuation of Bogdana's uh, uh, question. Why the association agreement isn't ratified here? Moldova has ratified, Georgia has ratified. What's the reason for delaying this date? And also, we have information about the citizens of Russia who were killed on the territory of Ukraine. Do you know the approximate number of such citizens of Russia? Thank you for your first question. Because now uh, there are so many urgent things. Uh, I have just, uh, during the last uh, days, heard about this sort of discussion about ratification of agreement that someone wants to delay it. First of all, as a chief negotiator, for me, that's my personal ambition, my personal vision. We need this, agree uh, this agreement. So no formal delays. Uh, can take place. Secondly, our case is unique. First, we signed the political part, and then the whole agreement as a whole. And we have a unique situation also how European Union is helping us. European Union gave us a unique opportunity of so-called autonomous preferences. That sounds bureaucratic, but uh, to put it in common language, we received uh, till the 1st of November full access to European market and we can use it. And we can use uh, this time in order to help our producers to enter the markets of the European Union. And that is the unique situation. We are now helping those who are planning to uh, come to markets here. And at the same time, and that's important, we are receiving the duty payments to the budget. And that is very important in our today's situation. So, of course, we're not talking about any delay. We're just in this unique situation. The second thing, and that's my personal ambition, but that's also the position of the President of Ukraine, we signed the agreement not in order to demonstrate that we are loyal to inter Euro integration. We're all loyal to Euro integration. I tell everyone that I was negotiating not as a bureaucrat. That's my personal conviction. But I was negotiating in order to have it implemented later. Now, we, okay, we ratified the agreement, but we need the mechanism of implementation. Now the budget process will start. Will money be allocated for Euro integration reforms in our today's budget? That is a big question. So now we have the draft national plan of implementation, and we unofficially 
have submitted it to European Commission for first comments and for consideration. I know that the President of Ukraine even is looking at such an option as uh, the possibility to prepare and implement the national program on implementation. What's the difference? The national plan, which will be prepared, it will be approved by the resolution of the Cabinet of Ministers. This will be an important benchmark, but this will not be uh, inserted into the legislation of Ukraine. If this is the national program, then this will be approved by the law. It will be approved by the Verkhovna Rada. Then no one in the, during the budgetary process will be able to say we cannot allocate money for Euro integration reforms. That's the priority. If this is implemented, I believe that's a fantastic idea. When I was negotiating, in the beginning, I believe this will be the national plan. Some countries, new EU members, they had the national program, and I believe that if we implement that during the next weeks, then this will be ideal option. And the third thing I mentioned, we are now having consultations in trilateral format. We are creating trilateral uh, advisory group, and no one after that will tell us that we are not discussing practical aspects of implementation. Implementation. And any restrictive measures which theoretically could be applied against us will have only political uh, background because we have uh, enough arguments to explain that. So it's not about delay of the ratification of the agreement. We will prepare that properly. The example of Moldova. I was always consulting with Moldova friends. I was helping them to negotiate on the agreement. In Moldova, the situation is different. In Moldova, the government is responsible for economic component. The government is responsible for implementation of the agreement. And they do not need ratification, basically. So when someone tells me, Moldova friends have done that in five days and you are doing it within a few weeks, that's absolutely different situation. So in this case, there are one, two, three, four, four factors, and all of them are taken into account, but talking about the, but we are not talking about the delay of the ratification. We need a clear vision and a clear plan, the national program of how we will do it so that the Agreement is not just uh, the intention, that's the key position of the president and my ambition. If we do not do that, then your integration will be in the future good words, but your integration is not words. These are reforms. There's no separate your integration. There are reforms which are to be implemented to become the member of EU. Sorry for answering so long. I did not know about the discussions going on. I read that recently. I want to explain the position of that in detail. Uh, and about uh, casualties. Uh, among Russians. Uh, this is rather complicated uh, issue uh, because those people who illegally have weapons, uh, they have no documents at all, no ideas at all, and how we have to determine and to de define uh, who they are. We know that there is a flow of weapons, uh, the flow of money, the flow of uh, people, uh, but uh, how much and how many, we do not know. And uh, later, probably, we will be able to define and determine. Uh, Ukrainian television, uh, uh, recently we had the statement by uh, Christopher de Mergy, uh, uh, who uh, mentioned that there should be a, a bypass uh, um, uh, pipeline around Ukraine, uh, and uh, Serbia has signed uh, the contract about the sou southern stream, and uh, uh, this creates an issue with the Euro, uh, European Union and um, uh, what what will be the risks for Ukraine in launching the southern stream and uh, um, 
the second if Europe would be able to reject from the southern stream whether it will be possible to um, uh, introduce the third stage of sanctions. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, um, Metternich uh, 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 and I, uh, in this context I would like to mention uh, uh, the um, quotation from Gorchakov, the Russian uh, diplomat. Uh, the Russia is uh, not uh, uh, becoming fury, it, it is concentrating usually. So what is the issue here? There are some projects, energy projects, which are of purely political nature, just like the uh, southern stream, uh, uh, even if it is constructed, what uh, it will change from the uh, energy supply point of view. Actually, nothing. What will it change for Europe? Uh, for me, it's uh, uh, a secret, too, because uh, the, the cost of it is around 20 billion uh, euros or even more. Now, there is a shale gas revolution in the U.S., and this greatly influences competitiveness of the country. And there is a big question whether Europe can uh, invest uh, uh, dozens of billions of euros uh, uh, and at the same time to postpone the second package, the third package, and uh, what you mentioned about about Serbia, that's true. This is similar position uh, of some other countries, but there are uh, countries whose territory the future pipeline will cro cross. Um, they are. They now have big doubts whether they need this pipeline. Um, uh, uh, then let's look at the existing pipelines uh, and transportation system uh, which uh, could be um, uh, modernized with uh, some moderate investments on behalf of the European Union, then this uh, transportation system uh, is able uh, to work long, long uh, period of time. Mm. The uh, third aspect that the European European fuel market becomes more and more liberalized. It receives more and more uh, LNG, and uh, sooner or later it will probably receive the shale gas from um, the US. Look at uh, uh, Eon uh, and other companies which uh, had contracts with Russia for dozens of years. Now they have quite suits um, with Russia. So our problem is to ensure supplies of gas to Ukraine on the conditions which uh, guarantee that these supplies will be based on the European rules and European standards. We are ready to uh, provide the transit, reliable transit of gas. Uh, there is now the uh, third energy package discussed, and in this context we discuss how the, uh, energy, uh, the gas transportation should be um, uh, correlated with the, the gas supplies to Ukraine. Uh, 
Але подивіться, in the context of gas or in the context of the division of Europe, які відбуваються, вони дозволили європейському союзу реально говорити одне одному. Actually, they allowed the European Union to speak one language today. Європейських європейських рад два роки тому, що відбувається зараз. Ви могли уявити взагалі рішення європейської ради останнього? Like what we have today. Two years ago, I think it was impossible. Today, they clearly speak about the Russia's responsibilities. They clearly speak about the conditions for Russia. I believe that now it is not just an abstract position of the European Union. This is my opinion, which I got after my discussions with European uh, um, colleagues. I understand that today their joint position is like a test uh, for understanding what is the role of the European Union today in the world. And uh, many people in the EU understand this. If they won't manage to speak today one language, they won't be able to do this in the future. What, what is the position of the president about an idea to have negotiations in Svetogorsk and whether you expect to have the next uh, uh, ceasefire when uh, the president authorized me to uh, represent Ukraine in the uh, negotiations, I immediately understood that it won't be easy. But the members of this uh, three-side uh, working group uh, uh, had, a, uh, had done an unprecedented work uh, during negotiations from the point of view of readiness to um, uh, get together to have talks, etc. I believe uh, uh, since in Donetsk it is impossible to meet today, then Svetogorsk may be a good place because this is a sacral place. Um, uh, this idea is now uh, launched now, suggested. Actually, we live in the uh, digitized world and we can have negotiations via Skype technology. That's easy. Um, actually, um, the rejections or any pretext not to meet, they, they are not uh, um, serious, actually, do not reflect serious position. We announced ceasefire um, for seven uh, Days, then we extended it for uh, 30 hours, and uh, um, unfortunately, uh, the, uh, there were 30 people killed or 100 wounded. Uh, a lot of infrastructure was ruined. Uh, well, now we resume uh, electricity supplies, water supplies in Slavansk. People slowly start to, uh, to uh, resume the, the normal life in Slavansk. I talked to my colleagues who work uh, who worked in Slavansk on negotiations with uh, bringing back and liberating hostages, and those hostages were left without food for three days. This were terrible things. We need two-sided ceasefire. This is important, and uh, without any preconditions, uh, without uh, any requests, you should done uh, this and that before there will be a ceasefire. We need the OC uh, monitors um, to be there, to be present there, and to observe who will uh, pre-count the ceasefire. Uh, we uh, counted more than 100, 108 
cases of the uh, ceasefire breaches. Uh, we need to have a, a work group on the hostages. It is impossible to have more than 100 people in, as a hostages, and uh, there are not only just um, servicemen, these are businessmen. There are 11 teachers taken as hostages, and uh, we cannot feel ourselves uh, good uh, unless uh, we have this issue unresolved. And, uh, and uh, we should close the border. Uh, uh, and so these are four points which we should discuss first and decide how to resolve them and how to move forward in these aspects. And then we will implement the peace plan by the president. It, it is a very clear plan. It uh, begins with the de-escalation. It uh, uh, explains how to ensure peaceful existence there. It contains a lot of humanitarian aspects, how to ensure uh, a reconstruction of the infrastructure. And yesterday, uh, speaking to the president and to the uh, chancellor of Germany, and our German friends allocated more than 2.5 million euros for the uh, reconstruction of Slavyansk now. No, not uh, next month and next year, but immediately, next week, this money will be transferred. And uh, uh, without uh, for reconstruction of Kramatorsk and Slavyansk, with this uh, intensive work, uh, we won't be able to reach de-escalation inside. Uh, uh, there is a necessity to organize local elections. There are people who are ready to take responsibility in those places. And, uh, uh, we have the idea of decentralization. This idea is very uh, good uh, accepted in uh, Europe. Minister Grossman uh, yesterday uh, made a statement in Brussels and, uh, in Brussels and Strasbourg and uh, he uh, announced his ideas and uh, they were perceived uh, uh, very friendly. Uh, they, uh, uh, ideas are similar to the uh, pol Polish model. Actually, de-escalation, humanitarian aspects and political aspects, these three components which comprise uh, uh, the uh, peace plan by President Poroshenko, they are important and should be understood stood clearly by those who would participate in negotiations on behalf of separatists. Uh, quite recently, in the interview to one Austrian publication, you mentioned uh, quite recently we will start restart the negotiations with uh, Russia to find the modus vivendi on Crimea. Please explain what did you mean saying we will start negotiations? Is that about some new positions of Ukraine? No. That's not uh, the exact quotation. I will tell you what it is about. We definitely no negotiations on any conditions of existence of Crimea will not be conducted. Crimea has always been and will be Ukrainian. Uh, probably that was not exact translation. We need critical consultation. There are our citizens who live there. There's economic and humanitarian aspects of life. We need to support Ukrainians who live there. We need to support Crimean Tatars who live there. Many Russians who live there. There. They uh, do not uh, uh, support the annexation and occupation of Crimea. We need to help them. As the former ambassador to Germany, I can tell you there are 3,000 Germans, ethnical Germans there, who are also against occupation of Crimea. How will Germany help them now? They have always been helping them via Kiev. These issues, that is where we have to find the modus vivendi. We need to help our citizens who live in Crimea. No negotiations on Crimea, no.
inter TV channel. There was information that Viktor Medvedchuk will not participate any longer in trilateral negotiations on settling the situation in Donbass. Do you know anything about that? Will he participate or not? And whose initiative that was? As far as I know, uh, during the uh, last round of negotiations, he did not participate in these negotiations in the last round uh, directly. He helped in contacts. In this case, he is not the representative of Ukraine. Uh, the president, former president Kuchma is the representative of Ukraine there. But for the future contacts, uh, uh, different in, uh, intermediaries could be used. I do not know who will be the intermediaries, Viktor Medvedchuk or someone else, or maybe we will not need intermediaries. If we, sta if we start the real uh, communication, even in the format of video conference, why do we need the intermediaries? That depends on the trilateral group. Uh, we need to ask them. Uh, Ukraine form. Russia has intentions to uh, have the um, uh, meeting of the Council of the OSCE. Do you have any information? Will there be such a meeting? If yes, then when? And uh, will that be possible? Is there any possibility that the draft suggested by Russia will be passed? No, the draft prepared by Russia uh, is uh, perceived as uh, basically only for Russia. There will be no meeting of the uh, OSC. All the delegations uh, absolutely criticized uh, Russia. No one is uh, going to. Uh, uh, discuss this uh, draft and uh, there will be no meeting of the Council of the OSC. I have a question. The actual participation of France and uh, Germany in uh, these negotiations, uh, are they sincere? Do they really represent 20 eight countries of European well, Union, Russia, Great Britain, for example. First of all, the participation of Germany and France, and that's not just participation at the level of the foreign ministers, that was a unique format that uh, appeared in normally ad hoc, and uh, sometimes our European colleagues call it uh, Normandia format, because that was the initiative of the Federal Council of uh, uh, Germany, uh, Merkel, and the president of France, that was done to help find some common views, viewpoints. Uh, and the ministers of foreign affairs had the meeting in Berlin. Uh, that was uh, not an easy meeting on the one hand. On the other hand, we uh, reached agreement on declaration. I really wanted to have more realistic things in the, uh, this declaration, but the negotiations are very complicated. I believe that the assistance of our German and French uh, colleagues and friends is important for us, uh, important at all the levels. It's first of all not about economic interests, but about values, that we live in the world where the rules, uh, there are certain rules, Russia violated all possible rules uh, in the sphere of international law, law, political commitments, I mean Budapest Memorandum, and not only that document, talking about Nadia Savchenko, I did not mention Russia, even in this case, violated all possible international documents, starting from Council, uh, Council Convention to Council Charter. That is the modality. They violated here and there any rules. We have to go back to the rules of game existing in the world, France, Germany, the whole European Union, why are they talking uh, the same language? Because for them, these rules are important, the values are important. And we, after we have signed the agreement, and then when we ratify it, we will have the same European values, which are included into the Lisbon Treaty, legally, Ukraine, 
після того, як угода буде діяти, перше діє, це юридичне зобов'язання дотримуватися європейських цінностей. Це для мене є одне з основних ключових дяк нашої Європи. Ми говоримо багато про цінності, цінності, які Дякую. Трилатерал групп every day I try to execute the ambition for these consultations to take place today. I believe that we have to ensure this dialogue. I call it a dialogue. When will it take place today or tomorrow? Unfortunately, I cannot tell you. This issue is to be addressed to the representative of trilateral contact group because they involved into the dialogue, but we are working on that on a permanent basis. I do hope that this contact, important contact, will happen in the nearest time. And last question from the moderator. Reforming the diplomatic service. We see that in the period of war, many of our ambassadors abroad were not ready to that. They cannot uh, talk to mass media. They do not know how to behave. How are you planning to enhance the efficiency of our embassies abroad and also economic diplomacy, looking for new markets, attracting foreign investment, participation of Ukrainian companies in foreign tenders? What's your understanding? Thank you for this question. I did not expect it. I came to the ministry with the vision to implement not one radical reform, but the whole set of radical reforms. Reforms, and I told everyone that this ministry will look different. It has to become the real uh, European diplomatic service like it is in European Union. And I told everyone I am ready to give everyone more freedom and work. I am ready to give you the opportunity to show what you can. But everyone has to take more responsibility, not in the bureaucratic sense. Uh, every small uh, boss shouldn't uh, write on the document uh, for your information. Everyone has to work as a team, in a team. Everyone should have corporate solidarity. We need to have a European program of training diplomats, of uh, uh, the, career, uh, of the um, advanced uh, training. They have to talk to representatives of mass media of NGO, they have to make use of these opportunities. We are very active in social networks, both in those which have always been important for us, Facebook and Twitter. I myself am uh, on the Twitter, but also in the networks which were not typical for us. We opened the new account in contact. Uh, there are many uh, people in the East and in Russia who do not read Facebook, but they will read us in Russian in contact. It's better if they read us uh, than if they watch Russian TV channels. This will be at least something in this uh, context. And we have many ideas like that. But that we need your assistance. There will be more interesting reforms in the financial sector. Every ambassador, every head of diplomatic service will not be afraid of cameras, of you. He will love you. I can uh, ensure you that is, well, you can come to us in Kiev in every point in the world. That is our task. I tell it to everyone. The president defines the foreign policy. The ministry implements Said. But if we fail to explain to you what are the priorities and how are we executing, then we do not understand how we execute the foreign policy. I always am ready to explain that. Every diplomat will be ready to explain that. 
That is uh, just a small part of the reforms that we want to implement, but the economy, of course, uh, the economics, uh, there's no politics without economics uh, in the world, uh, but we will set up a new department of economy that was uh, cancelled in the ministry. We will create the Institute of Regional um, Ombudsmen. Uh, we will have the live uh, process of communication to the business. It's not like some people come and we discuss what you can, what you cannot. We will have specific projects, specific ideas and specific setting of tasks. We will try to implement our economic, foreign economic policy and the support of our business in such a way that this becomes important for the country and the business, but not just important for us. That's our idea. We know how to do that, but we are always happy to get an advice. There are many things. Every diplomat can send me an email and tell me, you are doing it wrong, Mr. Minister, and I listen to good ideas. Also, any document, the national program on implementation of EU, it will not be a secret, a top a, a, a confidential document after the European Commission uh, looks at it, will put it into the internet for comments, for NGOs, for scientists, for just people who are interested in that, journalists. Everyone has to make his or her own contribution. If you do not, if you fail to uh, make contribution in this network society, we Ukrainians, we have a special feeling of uh, freedom, and that feeling of freedom should be transferred into how we are moving into towards Europe. Europe. Thank you, Mr. Minister. May, may I ask one question? One last. Central Council of the Hundreds of Maidan, please tell which one of your foreign colleagues in the countries that support revolution in Ukraine. Reacted to yesterday's statement uh, of Yarema about uh, uh, putting an end to Maidan. And your personal attitude, you know that Maidan had the main burden during the revolution, and today Yerema is talking about disseminating Maidan. Well, first of all, I understand no one is planning to disseminate Maidan, especially. Secondly, Maidan for us is more than a symbol. We have to do it so that it uh, stays a symbol. It will be present. But Maidan for us should be, first of all, here. If we do not have Maidan here, then we will go the way that uh, uh, used to be uh, the way, and we have to take care of that every second in such a way that we feel that in the country there is the society and the civil society and everything that is there, including us, diplomats, including others, bureaucrats, uh, civil servants, uh, has to function over, above the civil society, not next to it, not parallel to it. For for me, this is the key idea, and in this context, I do not know what's the reaction uh, of my colleagues to that statement, but my personal attitude, I've explained that. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Good luck to you. Thank you. Ага. Супер, я теж хотів би з нею зустрітися. Я її не бачив вже років шість, напевно. Ми разом в Україно-Британському сіті клубі.